Good afternoon, everybody. It's a pleasure to be here at Advertising Week, even without being there, as you know, because we can't travel. RTL Ad Connect is the international total video sales house of the RTL Group, and our job is to provide simplified access to all of RTL Group plus external mandate total video inventory. So we work with the likes of ITV in the UK or the RAI in Italy, and as well from with our internal uh, RTL subsidies like RTL Medium Gruppe in Germany or the M6 Group in France. In total, we are working with <coughs> 150 uh, TV channels and more than 500 online platforms all over the world. And our job is to deliver exclusive advertising solution in safe and premium digital and broadcast media environment to millions of potential customers across Europe and the world every day. Now, uh, quick word about me. Uh, my name is Jean-Baptiste Mojo. I'm head of marketing at RTL Ad Connect, and I'm based in Paris. Let's jump uh, straight into the content and the topic of today, uh, which is a very ambitious and pushy title, leveraging the power of premium content across all video touch points. And to be more specific, what are we going to talk about? First, we are going to quantify uh, these video touch points uh, in terms of consumption, putting the consumer right into the center, and how much videos does he see, on which platforms, what's the difference country to country, what's the outlook uh, looking beyond 2020 in terms of video consumption. And then we'll, ju we'll jump to a more qualitative aspect of the video touch points, uh, meaning the impact for advertiser, uh, because, well, a touch point can be very different if you're watching your TV or if you're watching another platform, the smartphone or the tablet, for example, and we will see how does it affect the impact of the video touch point. And we will talk then about the third challenge, which is the complexity uh, of the current market and how we try to make it more simple for international media buyers. So we'll start by taking, uh, let's say, a deep dive into the video touch points and trying to understand uh, the scenery uh, of the video consumption across Europe and the world nowadays. And of course, uh, I need to start with the elephant in the room there. Uh, uh, and you know all about it. That's the current situation, uh, the lockdown and uh, the COVID situation. And from a video perspective, uh, the COVID is making the consumer appetite for video growth. Uh, Looking a bit at the figures from country to country, consumer nowadays would watch from four to six hours of video uh, per day per person, whether they are located in China uh, or in, uh, in the US or in Europe. But of course, the COVID accelerated this growing consumer appetite for video because in every country in 2020, the reforecast uh, puts an on top let's say five to 15% uh, uplift in these consumption figures. So we are talking about four to six hours of video per person across the world. But what we have to be aware is that the distribution of these four to six hours might be very, very different country to country. And this is what we see. The reality in the US, in the UK, or in the Netherlands is very different from what we have in the rest of continental Europe. More advanced markets, would watch a bit less linear TV, uh, even if linear TV in these markets still accounts for the majority of the video touch points, and the mix is evolving towards more and more online video. And talking about online video, we also make a distinction between the short form we are watching, uh, the likes of YouTube or the inside players where we would watch formats that are typically less than 15 minutes, and the very highly growing long form video consumption where we reference all the VOD platforms, whether they are subscription VOD, the likes of Netflix or advertising supported. So different reality, market to market, uh, of, but a fragmentation everywhere between television and the emerging uh, long form and short form online video. So jumping to our main uh, platform for video consumption, which is still uh, linear TV and referencing back again uh, to uh, the COVID and the lockdown, we had a huge immediate short-term impact of the lockdown on our linear TV viewing. Uh, it jumped uh, during the last week of March 
uh, in every European country by more than an hour. Uh, the, Europe, the European average of uplift was, was plus 81 minutes per day per person. So nearly one hour and a half on top of what was watched before in every European country. And then it went back, I wouldn't say to normal because we still see an uplift uh, in the summertime, June, July, August are still higher than 2019, but it's closer to the, uh, to the normal. So the very short term was an explosion of linear TV viewing. Now, referencing uh, to the long term, we spent a lot of time with our TV sets during the, long during the lockdown time. And in front of, of our TV set, we watched TV, of course, but we also watched a lot of online video directly on our connected TV sets. And the reforecast of the consumption of video across screens uh, before and after COVID shows us a longer term trend, which is the predominance of the connected TV as the number one go-to screen to watch online video. Uh, before COVID, we thought it would be smartphones and tablets that would still lead the show for 2021. Uh, it was reforecasted after COVID for connected TV to be the main a place to watch online video. And what do we watch uh, when we watch online video on uh, connected TV screens? Well, we are less likely uh, to watch some short form videos and much more likely to watch full episodes of long form VOD. In the US, this long form consumption is expected to grow year on year and to be up to one hour and 10 minutes in 2022. And the same for Europe. But nowadays, three out of four Europeans are watching more than one hour of VOD daily. And what's particularly of interest uh, from an advertising perspective, uh, looking at these people that watch a lot of VOD, is that they are exclusive. Generally, they are the ones that naturally would watch much, much less linear TV. But uh, there's, a no, there's also a ceiling in this VOD consumption. And it's not the time, it's more the budget we can allow to uh, a video on demand on a monthly basis. Because with the launch of Disney+, Plus, Amazon Prime, Netflix, people can afford one, maybe two uh, subscription services per household, but their pockets are not deep enough to go to more and more content. And today, uh, let's say the limitation for watching more VOD is that the price is too high and therefore it leads to an opportunity for a new form of VOD which would be free or at least cheap uh, and uh, where you would watch ads. And if we look from the consumer perspective, well most of the consumer nowadays are willing to watch ads if they can pay less for their VOD. So the appetite for long-form content is so high and so pushed by the lockdown and the COVID effects that people are actually willing to see ads. Uh, well, if there are some advertisers and agencies watching this video, like consider that there are people out there that wants to see your ads. And it's a blue ocean for the ad supported VOD services because you see uh, more and more platforms launching. We talk a lot about Peacock, the NBC Universal service, about Tubi, about Pluto TV, they are multiplicating. And their forecasted revenue will be growing a lot by 2025. We expect it to double from, from a global perspective. And from the broadcaster point of view, uh, which we are part of, there's also a very sweet spot uh, in this appetite for ad-supported VOD because it's a, it's a place where we already sit with our broadcast VOD platforms. Uh, I will reference to two, ITV Hub in the UK or Sixplay in France. These platforms are already heavily consumed on connected TV. So this will mean we have an opportunity to grow our broadcast board platform business in the, in the near future. Having talked about connected TV, there's one development we also foresee in the future is that more connected TV in the households and more consumption of connected TV uh, across Europe will also uh, unlock opportunities to address uh, the main screen and to put some targeted ads uh, within the linear signal. So looking at overall Europe, we are looking now at more and more households that can be addressed through addressable TV. Jumping to the short form side of things, uh, back in 
2015, the situation was pretty straightforward for platform where you, you could consume short form video. Facebook was leading the show with nearly 60% uh, of usage uh, in the target group, but the 2020 reality is changing and it's a great fragmentation of the social network uh, reality. Uh, we've now TikTok entering the game and redistributing the cards or on where is the go-to place to consume short form video. Uh, it's not the same platform, it's not the same content we consume when we go for short form. Uh, the reality five years ago was more based on user-generated content, the influencers or YouTubers that were creating video in their homes, in their bedrooms, were running the show on YouTube. We see the share of professional content growing in the YouTube consumption, meaning people are going more and more to social platforms to watch the professional content. And nowadays, these global platforms are another channel of distribution for traditional media content. And the content is the perfect transition to our second part, uh, meaning not all video touch points are equal. Uh, the impact uh, from an advertising perspective on someone who's watching a user-generated content and a professional media content cannot be the same. And well, to prove it, you can ask the people, do you like it better? But you can also uh, do some nice scientific experiments. And that's what Integral Ad Science performed in the US in 2018. Uh, they actually show th the same ads on eight different websites, four ranked as high quality, four ranked as low quality. And rather than asking people what they thought about, what they thought about the ads, they plugged some electrodes to the brain to try to interpret uh, what was the brain reaction to the ads in different contexts. And in terms of likability, in terms of engagement, in terms of memor memorability, the high quality context always bring a double digit uplift to the same ad. Second experiment, uh, an Australian one this time, uh, they exposed uh, a set of people to advertising on different platforms, TV on TV screen, TV on digital screen, what we reference as broadcast board, and also ads on video uh, on Facebook and YouTube. And then they tried to measure an immediate uplift on sales. So they asked people to purchase something uh, that they might have seen an ad for. And there the uplift is much more important for broadcast board and for television. And they repeated the experiment day after day to see the decrease of this sales uplift effect. And on TV, we see that it takes 109 days for the sales uplift effect to fade away. So not all touch points are equal. TV and broadcast board apparently are the best driver for effectiveness. And the combination of the two is also creating some incremental effect uh, compared to uh, one uh, medium used as a standalone. So yeah, broadcast board has an uplift effect when used uh, in combination with, uh, with television. Last but not least, we also may compare the quality uh, of content when we see it on YouTube, because YouTube is a very general platform. You can find all kinds of context on YouTube. And there we, we did a, a quick post test, uh, an experiment on what was the reaction of people when they were seeing an ad on, let's say, any content on YouTube and on the curated environment of professional, traditional media content distributed on YouTube. And here we see the likability rate uh, in a curated environment on the YouTube platform is much, much higher when the ad only appears uh, around professional media content. So yes, premium content uh, is a more qualitative uh, touch points in terms of video. So if the broadcasters have, let's say, the majority of the quantity of the touch points, and if they have the most qualitative touch points, what's the next challenge? Well, the next challenge is the fragmentation issue because a broadcaster is no more than a, than a local business. And the competition the broadcasters are facing today is not a local business, it's global networks. The FANGs can amortize their tech, data, and content across all the world, whereas each and every broadcaster has have their local approach 
to their business. So that's a clear USP for an international buyer. They can access a one-stop shop through the through the things. And that's the challenge we are trying to answer, and that's the USP we are trying to replicate at RTL at Connect. From the tech perspective, first, we access all the broadcast vote platforms of our partners locally through one single platform that we called VMP Connect, and that can be accessed for, uh, easily through all the demand side platforms that the trading desk and advertiser are using today. So that's the tech approach of putting all of our broadcast vault inventory onto one place to solve the fragmentation issue. The other approach is to do a one-stop shop based on a content brand. If I take an example of a very famous one, Got Talent, that's an in-house production of the RTL group through our Fremantle branch. Uh, Got Talent is on television on many, many markets. And on television, you can do a lot around the program, not only classic advertising, but also sponsorship, licensing, placement. The content also resonates on the broadcast vault platform, and it also resonates even more broadly across all the world on YouTube because you have currently about 50 channels uh, broadcasting Got Talent content on YouTube, and they are available all around the world. So it can be for an advertiser a single access to a single content all over the world and across different media types. To give a more concrete example of what happened recently, uh, choosing one content brand and associating uh, a brand with it, an advertiser with it, TikTok uh, currently wants to expand its footprint in, uh, in Europe and they selected a content that matched very well with their, let's say, core target group, uh, very famous for those of you who are in the UK, Love Island, and uh, TikTok was the partner for Love Island in two European markets, uh, in the UK with ITV, but also in Germany with RTL Spy, where they were associated to the content on TV, but also online with the candidates posting stories, doing some licensing on online, associating the names of the two brands. As a wrap up of what we just showed, uh, we would say first that from the consumption perspective, video consumption is on the rising trend on a global level with TV being the main platform for video consumption and VOD consumption on connected TV screen on the rise. On the impact, we have seen that the impact of premium content on consumers' mind is greater and the ROI and brand lift is also greater when we associate ads to premium content. And Third, solving the complexity challenge. Uh, the challenge for broadcasters today is to create a global one-stop shop with single spokesperson or single tech platforms to allow the international media buyers to roll out their strategy at the local level. Thank you very much.